come here and before meetings with certain members of staff did drive up that particular cost. Nova Products cost wasn't um, extreme in that regard anyway, so they were comfortable with the two meetings. So, Bart, thanks, thanks for all your work on this. We really appreciate it and appreciate the recommendation. Just wondering if you could kind of just outline, I think I kind of got it, but just kind of high, very, at a very high level, why Nova Product is, is the best choice. Just, you know, you said you guys were comfortable proceeding with them, and, and I, I trust your judgment, mm -hmm. but I also want to kind of just kind of bullet point it out why they're, why they're superior to the other choices. Yeah, I think of the three that were remaining, two of them definitely had access to a large amount of data through their database and through their typical sources. So both their resources in terms of data and personnel, um, of two of them really outshone the third candidate, which, like I said, was more economic development in our, in our minds. I mean, all three of them could have done it. There's no doubt about that in my mind. So in terms of that, Nova Brodick had um, that experience. I would say their, um, their study in Indianapolis and Northern counties showed a lot of nuance to the data. So instead of just saying, you know, this is what the number says, they would go into, um, you know, reasons why that may or may not be flawed. And so they, they kind of, they, they researched more of that as opposed to giving you, you know, standard census data and, and tables. Um, I will say one of the negatives that we, we did review on them was their study was very long and lengthy and we would ask them to provide a more concise executive summary. <laughs> but it was long and lengthy because they had the explanation <coughs> behind the data. So we felt as though they put the work into it. It wasn't just spitting us out a table. Um, okay. You know, they explained it very well. They were engaged. Um, I believe, I don't want to get it wrong, I believe they had a very qualified um, public engagement person on their team who we were impressed with their resume on, and so we thought that portion of the study would also be useful. Um, so just in, in general, we, we really felt as though they had the, um, the resources and the, um, the work product that we were comfortable with recommending, um, and good for us, the price was more reasonable than, than other, other competition as well. Thank you. Did you, um, I usually, when I'm on a panel to pick, I usually try to ask if there's women in, in leadership roles <clears throat> and, or if there's any minority involvement in staff. I think Nova Product was both women okay. on, on their team, and that's a leadership reference, so just to make sure I'm right on there. Um, I know the main person definitely was, and I thought the um, public relations specialist also, especially with auditors, for some reason, auditing companies like they very few women. <laughs> Come on, guys, it's 2019. You know? <laughs> so yeah, the, the team was um, Rachel Denton was was the main contact that we referenced, and then Julia Grace Smith um, um, was the. Um, full-time consultant who specialized in the public engagement aspect of it. They also had David Gordon on the team, so it was the three people that they proposed that two of them were female. Right, I actually would say it was a good job of the um, diversity of the, of the five was very mm -hmm. good. I mean, two of them were minority-owned. Correct. I believe, believe in the five. So I thought that was, that was more fun to, to pull a broad spectrum of firms. So we did confirm that they could meet the timeline because as we'll discuss in the strategic planning um, item next, um, we are in a somewhat tight time frame to get this done hopefully this year. All of them confirmed that this was doable from a time frame. Um, we also followed up with questions of how long they thought the study would last. Nova Brodick thought their study would last up to five years. Um, SB Friedman thought perhaps two to three. And so we're hoping that five years is, is relevant. Um, but they, they definitely said that they could get this study done within that time frame and that it would last for five years, that it would be relatively relevant um, moving forward with programs and reviews. What would be five years? How long the study is well relevant? That the data would be yeah. relevant. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah. <laughs> Not how long it's going to take. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, so, yeah. That doesn't seem like a tight time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll okay. look that we um, contract with Nova Brodick Comprehensive Housing Market Study Needs Analysis for an amount not to exceed 
in favor? Okay. Uh, discussion? <laughs> uh, is it 35 or is it, because I noticed in the, in, in, in the, um, in the oh, shoot. 49, yeah, it's actually. <laughs> These are flipped, correct. Thank you for catching that. No product was 35,000, redevelopment was the 49,955. Oh. Oh. It's too quick on that. Yes, Nova product was 35,000. Oh, okay. And that was the motion that was yes, it was presented. So I had it right in the motion, thankfully, and wrong in the memo. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> okay, just to confirm, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Thank you, everybody. But just to be clear, we're confirming it for, for 49 and not 35. Oh, for 35. 35. 35. 35. 35. They are 35. They are oh, 35. 35. Okay. <laughs> okay. First bullet is 35. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. No. So yeah, that's why the, the motion was correct. It's correct in the motion. It's wrong in the... Okay, good. No, that was, that's... I'm just trying to twist you up, know, twist you up at 750. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just read what's written. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Next item, item five. Oh, sorry. Oh. Procedural question. I didn't vote on that. It was my intention to not. I also want to So you said yeah. 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 Okay. But I need to make that known, right? I think we just should know. I said yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Okay, item five, 2020 strategic planning initiative. Yeah, so Becky, you um, wanted to just remind everyone where we're at with this. So on um, August 20th, President Rosick, Trustee Amenta, Chair Hammond, um, and myself and, and Mark um, met with the financial advisors of Baker Tilly to strategize on the schedule and content um, for the Village Board and CEA initiative strategic planning session. Um, so both Trustee Amenta and, and Chair Hammond were there, so if they have anything to add from their perspective. Um, it was concluded that we um, would do a, a brief survey um, to, to volunteer committees, including the Village Board and CEA, to seek their thoughts prior to two planning sessions held in January of 2020. Um, following, the, following that planning session, um, a communication plan will be developed for the initiatives to inform the public um, steps involved to seek feedback and conclusions of the strategic planning session with the Board and CEA. Um, so essentially, we met with them and had a, had a discussion about what kind of um, pre-work to do prior to the strategic planning session. They presented a timeline that included the survey in late November, early December of 2019. Um, then they would compile the responses in December um, for the first meeting in early January, second meeting in late January, and then the final report to the Village Board and CEA in February. Great. So she just asked me to provide a brief overview, like I said, a trustee mentor or, or chair hand to summarize their experience with that meeting with Baker Tilly. I think it was a, I would say it was a good meeting. Um, it was, I would, it was very active discussion amongst, uh, amongst the three of us, right? I mean, um, with um, Allison on, on the phone, but I think Baker Tilly got a good sense. We, we tried to give them a good sense for sort of where we are, where we've been and where we are and some of the challenges we're confronting and just some of the, you know where people are in the village and, and how do we move forward together um, so I, I think what they were expecting to get out of the meeting is not necessarily what <clears throat> what they got I think they got maybe a lot more <laughs> right a lot <clears throat> more insight again into what we're hoping this can accomplish for us and the discussions that the village can have about it so again I think it was a, a good meeting it took us a while to I think focus in on some of the key things we wanted them to do, but I think we got there in the end. What would you say those things were? Can you give us kind of a ten thousand foot view um, of? Well, you know, again, I think it was a bit of on? a bit of the history of where Shorewood has come from, the challenges that we had with respect to the business community development, why the CD was started, why we started doing the the TID structure you know that things were not going in the right direction 10 15 years ago for the village that you know capital in oakland did not <laughs> look very good things were definitely going the wrong directions so just you know and, and not necessarily hindsight 2020 just saying that was what the leaders at the time decided was the most important thing and here's what we did and now you know here we are with the development that we have um and um, so now that we have that let's start looking forward as to what are the what are the next steps how do we and again i i feel there still is some 
you know, people in different places with respect to where Shorewood is and where Shorewood's going. I think we're going to always have that. And yeah. so how do we have discussions about that? How do we how do we engage people to feel like they're involved in that discussion so that you know, ultimately, no matter where we go, people feel like they were heard, um, that they were able to participate, um, that their thoughts were incorporated, um, and then they can be part of the solution as well and not feel like um, they were left out, left behind. So, <clears throat> I, you know, I think we were to some degree hopeful that, you know, this is a um, integrative project <laughs> that brings people together a little bit um, in terms of a, a vision of where we're going. Mm -hmm. So I, that's a super high I mean, level. I, I don't. This meeting was a couple of weeks. It ago. was a while. I'm trying to think. <laughs> but I, um, I do remember we were talking about like what the, some of the underlying goals of some of the CDA policies had been, like originally. The policy, like the duplex conversion, well, that's a village policy, but it was to allow more families, which was really oriented towards school population, like supporting the school population. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, but then, so, so that was one, but then there was also, I think, and I think some of the multifamily development, the understanding was we, we will bring higher income people living in the business district that will support the business district. You know, and some of, but I mean, some of the development I think has appealed a lot to millennials who want to come and be near um, places where they can go and, and have dinner and have a drink and not have to drive home. Yeah, you know, so has great, so great has that. Huge, yeah. You yeah. know, and so I, so it, I I think we kind of we're trying to think. Well, you know, what what are we? To, and and Pete said at the end, which I remember was like our ability to affect things. You know the market is the market I mean we don't have enough money to really affect I mean we really could just move things on the margin a little bit and so um, so I think part of it is we have to um, you know are we are we like to me one of the issues is, has been gentrification and lack of affordable housing I mean it's changing the nature of Shorewood and so I mean that would be a goal I personally would have um, other people may still be school population, which I think is also a concern, you know. So where we go with the policy, I think too, we talked about some of these underlying like philosophy almost of what we're trying to accomplish and, and, um, and we did. And I know the, I think the biggest issue we had with Baker Tilly was that they were, they wanted to start from like broad goals, like, you know, what the overall village and we were like, no, we've already done that. We do prioritization every year. We you know, we are pretty clear on our big picture. We just need you to focus on economic development, housing type stuff. Yeah. But they, they came in and what was he, he was proposing to talk to CDA and board and do a survey of CDA and board of like, you know, what's the most important thing in Shorewood? I mean, we do the community survey. <laughs> you know, I think we all have a pretty good sense yeah. of what people like about Shorewood. So we, um, and then we told him if you're going to do a survey, you should do include the plan commission in there. And then we said, well, let's include, you know, conservation and pet, but like include everyone who's on a volunteer committee or commission. Um, so I think. But specifically with respect. But specifically, to yeah. Economic development, what yeah. the CDA does. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, so yeah, I think we had to kind of corral yeah. them in a little bit because we've already done a lot of that work. Um, so, I think some of the other, you know, st strategic planning to me is a bit of a challenge because obviously you have you have members of the community who have certain thoughts on <clears throat> where we should go what we should do not that's not necessarily the right answer you know it's what some people want <clears throat> you know what's going on in the surrounding community so I mean there's so many things that go into strategic planning to me I'm like how do you get to sort of the right what is the right answer and, and you know a lot of it is as we were saying a lot of it is we have to make some decisions and I'm not sure we've made some of those decisions yet. So part of, part of this process was to gather that to again, you know, get us on the same page. And by us, I mean all these different, you know, board, the CDA, yeah. kind of all these different groups to say yes, this is the broad. Well, it seems like the only broad thing the village can do. To your point, you don't have a ton of money. I mean, you have do have the ability to put ordinances yes. and, and things in place, and, and you can make. I don't want to 
the one word that's coming to mind, extreme decisions. Like, are we gonna be like Cedarburg, quaint, tiny, no building over two stories tall kind of decisions? To whatever, uh, well, <laughs> well, right, it, it, that's my feeling with short is already blown past anything you could probably make a decision like that on. But there's some people here who I think would like to see that. Nothing new built, everything stayed the same, mm -hmm. you know, and then you've got a, a totally different faction of people who have moved here in the last three to four years who don't because of what this because of what has been yep. done. Yep. That a lot of people yes. haven't necessarily felt great about. So yeah, it's it's an interesting that is the that is the to me the crux of the opportunity. Yeah, there's yeah. the people who when you talk to say it's not a village it used to be a village and it doesn't have that feel of being a village anymore. But you're right, the people who moved here recently, you know I'm one of them. They don't we know. we've lived here four <laughs> years and we moved here specifically because Which, it was more like um, an urban I've lived here on and off. Urban 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 urban. I, think, I think it feels more like a village now than it ever has. <laughs> you do? Why? Well, cause, because people are out talking to each other and together in all the places that have been created. I, that, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah, because village is, is, what, is, is how you define village. Yeah. Like, <laughs> we, our family goes out to eat, you know, and see your friends. And I see saw us. you the other day. <laughs> I went to him and I ran into six other people that I and, know. Yeah. And, and to me, that's what being in a village is to us, but not necessarily to some people. To other, and, and, and they're both here, legitimate. I mean, it's not yeah, one isn't right that's and one what makes yeah. it tricky. When we, when <laughs> we moved here, my wife wouldn't step foot in the village tavern. She refused to. The pub? You know? Yeah. The village what? proper water. She didn't like it. She was a don't. And I well, wasn't disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> that's, that's my kind of place. <laughs> but so we